Let's now look into request message definition. In the request, we have two parameters. Diagnostic session control, SID, which is mapped to value 10 and some function which is mapped to diagnostic session types. Let's have a look into the diagnostic session types that can be sent on the sub function parameter. In the last video, we had a look into important definitions used in diagnostic services and module. Let's now get into details of our first diagnostic service. That's diagnostic session control service, service 10. The diagnostic session control service is used to enable different diagnostic sessions in the server. A diagnostic session enables a specific set of diagnostic services and functionality in the server. OEMs shall define the exact set of services and functionality enabled in each diagnostic session based on their use case. There shall always be exactly one diagnostic session active in a server. A server shall always start the default diagnostic session when powered up. No other diagnostic session is started, then default diagnostic session shall be running as long as the server is powered on. A server shall be capable of providing diagnostic functionality under normal operating condition and in other operating conditions defined by the OEM. Let's now look into different cases when client requests different sessions. In cases where the client requests a diagnostic session, which is already running, then the server shall send a positive response and shall remain in the same running session. For example, when the server is in default session and the client requests to start the default session, then the server shall reinitialize the default session completely. The server shall reset all activated, initiated or changed settings or control during the activated session. This doesn't include long-term changes programmed into the non-volatile memory. In cases where the client requests a new diagnostic session, which is different from already running session, then depending on the configuration, the server shall send positive response before or after the transition to the new session. For example, when the server transitions from default session to any other session other than the default session, then the server shall stop the events that have been configured in the server via the response on event services during the diagnostic session. When the server transitions from any diagnostic session other than the default session to any other diagnostic session other than the default session, then the server shall reinitialize the diagnostic session by each event that has been configured in the server via response on event service shall be stopped. Security shall be re-logged, which also implies that all the active diagnostic functionality that was dependent on the security access shall be reset and all other diagnostic functionality that is supported in new session that is not dependent on the security access shall be maintained. When the server transitions from any diagnostic session other than default session to the default session, then the server shall stop each event that has been configured in the server via the response on event service and security shall be logged. Any other active diagnostic functionality that is not supported in the default session shall be terminated. For example, any configured output control shall be disabled and the states of the communication control shall be reset, which means normal communication shall be enabled if it was disabled in the previous session. In case if the server is not able to start the requested new diagnostic session, then it shall respond with a negative response message and the current session shall continue. The set of diagnostic services and functionality in a non-default diagnostic session except programming session is a superset of the functionality provided in the default session. In the essence, the diagnostic functionality of the default session is also available when switching to any non-default diagnostic sessions. To start a new diagnostic session, a server may request that certain condition be fulfilled. Conditions can be OEM defined 
Some examples of such condition could be that the server may only allow a client with certain client ID to start a specific new diagnostic session or certain safety conditions such as vehicle speed limit may need to be satisfied. Let's now look into request message definition. In the request we have two parameters diagnostic session control SID which is mapped to value 10 and some function which is mapped to diagnostic session types. Let's have a look into the diagnostic session types that can be sent on the sub function parameter. Firstly, we have value 01. This value maps to default session. The default session doesn't support any diagnostic application timeout handling. No tester present service is necessary to keep the session active. Then we have value 2. This value maps to programming session. This diagnostic session enables all the diagnostic services required to support memory programming of the server. In case the server runs the programming session in boot software, the programming session shall only be left via an ECO reset service initiated by the client or a diagnostic session control service with session type equal to default or a session layer timeout in the server. The value 03 maps to extended diagnostic session. The diagnostic session can be used to enable all the diagnostic services, even the ones which are not enabled in the default session. Then we have value 04. This value maps to safety system diagnostic session. The diagnostic session enables all the diagnostic services required to support safety system related functionality such as airbag deployment. Then the range of value 0, 5 to 3 f and 7 f are all reserved by ISO SAE. The value range from 40 to 5 f is reserved for OEMs and the value range from 60 to 7 e is reserved for the suppliers. The response of diagnostic session control can either be positive or negative. Let's first have a look into the positive response. Firstly, we have diagnostic session control response SID mapped to value 50. Then we have the sub function in the response, which is equal to the sub function present in the request. Then we have the session parameter record, which contains session specific parameters such as P2 server max and P2 star server max values reported by the server. The P2 server max value is the default max timing supported by the server for the activated diagnostic session. The value is also the max timing taken by the server to send first response. The P2 star server max value is enhanced default max timing by also containing the NRC78 pending request NRC supported by the server for the activated diagnostic session. Let's now look into the negative response. Some of the typical negative response obtained for the diagnostic session control are value 12, subfunction not supported. This NRC shall be sent if the subfunction parameter is not supported. Then we have value 13, incorrect message length or invalid format. This NRC shall be sent if the length of the message is wrong. And then we have value 22, which is condition not correct. This NRC shall be sent if the criteria for the request diagnostic session control are not met. Let's understand the request and response with an example. Let's assume the client wants to activate programming session and that the P2 server max is 50 and B2 star server max is 5000 milliseconds. Then the client would send request as shown and the server would respond positive response as shown. So we had a detailed look into the diagnostic session control in this session. In upcoming session, we'll have a look into the ECO reset service, service 11. Thank you.